Okay, hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Ms. Roxanne and this is Daily Rambles. Today we're doing, era, we're doing season seven uh, episode. My name is Emiko Queen. So we're going to start off with um, Emiko, Green Arrow, Corner Sky, and Awesome, right off the bat. And she is crossing names off a list, like season one Oliver did, trying to right the wrongs. And we have a training montage, and then we see her meet with this guy for information, and she's looking for someone named Glenn Morgan. And um, he gives her the schematics or like the blueprint of the building of where to get the information from. And they have to break into the server room and to, in order to get the information. So she does that by knocking out to the guards with uh, like some type of gas or something. But they wake up and they manage to um, hit her with um, a bullet. And so she left uh, a little bit of a trail. And then she uh, shows up um, to Wild Dog and he helps her out and stitches her up. Then at CPD, he's at the crime scene with Oliver as the first time being there as an official person. And uh, the, the current um, forensic person's like not happy about it at all. And so um, Dina, um, so Oliver had to talk to Dina about uh, taking the um, shard and getting it tested by Felicity, who's awesome at doing that type of stuff. And it's like, well, let's just use the resources that you hired me for. <laughs> She's like, oh, okay. So um, then we cut to where Emiko wakes up in Renee's apartment. And then she kind of gets up and leaves. And then we have a flash board scene where Zoe goes to visit Renee, um, who is the mayor of the Glades. So basically, uh, I think she works in his actual office, actually. And then we have uh, the present day, where Diaz is getting questioned by Layla, and literally got nowhere. He literally says, screw you, and pretty much moves on to some, whatever else. <laughs> and then um, we cut to where Felicity is working on the... Um, the, the um, the test she's running and she got a match and he she's like uh Oliver you might want to sit down for this and it's like why <laughs> he's like uh you have a sister on your dad's side and then we cut to where Amika found the guy and then we have um the wild dog interfered before she could off him and she gets really pissed off about that she said if you ever do that again I'm going to arrow through you and, and then leaves. And um, then Oliver tries to process everything. And then we uh, cut to where Felicity is struck an offshore account. And it's somewhere in the Glades. And But it's in his mom's name. And then you have uh, Emiko sticking out the uh, Glenn's compound. And with this one, there's like some weird music I think they're testing out to use in the show. And it just felt very off. <laughs> and then we cut to where Diggle talks to Diaz, and the deputy director listens. And Diggle basically offers the deals like, you tell us the information we want that we want, and we'll let you go. And the deputy's like, I'm going to need to see you for a minute. <laughs> And so he, uh, the director gets kind of pissed, but Dig covers it up by using the Bruce car, the one in to redo the ghost protocol, which is basically the Suicide Squad from DC, but they can't say that anymore because the, uh, the movie and uh, the second one coming out and just everything that's happening with the DCEU and not with DC TV. So they had to use another thing. And so the director um, is okay with that, but he get, but she is pissed as hell with Diggle about it because of everything. Because um, she didn't want to redo that at all. That was not her. That's not what she wanted to do. And so then, um, so when Amiko was sticking out the place, she was like, she does need help, and Renee has been offering that, so he, so she reached out to him, and so he agrees to help her. Then we have a flash force scene where Zoe wants his help, and with something called like the Archer something, some type of uh, program that helps them out with 
um, and living in crime in the Glades. And he gets really mad about it, and, you know, they argue, and then she leaves. Then we go back to the present day, where, like I said, Emiko reaches out to Renee, and they talk. And basically, um, he, she always, she asks him, like, why do you want to help me, like, like, just why, like, what's the reason? And he feels left behind because everyone else has managed to find to do what they need to do in, I guess, an illegal way. And he just feels left behind in that sense that he's no longer part of a team that's doing vigilante justice. Then we have an all, uh, so Oliver and Felicity go over the paperwork and basically, um, um, Oliver's dad sent Walter a letter and he reads the letter and he was supposed to take care of her, of Emiko and her mother, but apparently uh, Moira was like, no, thank you. That's not happening. And because at first I was like, Walter knew and he didn't do anything, but I'm assuming Moira got wind of everything and shut everything down. I was like, huh, no. And then so Oliver gets really upset by it, and then we cut to um, Emika goes back and talking with um, Renee, and she voices why she's doing what she's doing. And so basically, the Glenn guy took out her mother in the Glades last year, and basically um, there was a fire that covered up from what happened to her, and so that's why she's very, you know mad and trying to find this guy. So Renee offers to help and she agrees to let him help. So we have a flash forward scene where Dina confronts Renee and they get very heated. She tried to reason with them. Showed them the, bat the tattoo that all of them got and he wasn't having it. <laughs> but she uh, got the codes anyway. And then we go to the present day where Diggle and Lila have it out. And then we have Curtis helps Renee and Amiko. Um, uh, then we go back to Glenn, then we go to Glenn's compound, where, uh, we have a great fight scene between Glenn and Emiko, but, uh, it turns out he didn't actually do anything, and, um, someone set him up, because he just came back into the country last month. So he didn't, he said he was gone for, like, two years, and so she gets upset, because now she, her, um, her trail went super cold and everything. So Renee offers his help again and she accepts. Then we have a flash forward scene where Dina got the codes and now they're in the system. And we find out that Renee is behind it with this sleazy guy and that sleazy guy off Felicity. And they gave all some music like it was supposed to be like someone that we know. I was like, I don't know who this is. Um, I thought it might have been Oliver's son, William, but I don't think that's him. So, I don't know who this person is, because they didn't say. And Renee didn't even have a problem with it when he said that he did that. But then, when he leaves the office, he's starting to have, like, a touch of doubt, but not full-on doubt. And then we cut to the present day where um, we have a nice little Alicity moment. And then Diaz gets implanted with the failsafe. And then Oliver meets Emiko. And that's the end of the episode. Uh, really good episode. I really enjoyed it. I give this a minus. Uh, just the whole thing that um, Renee goes um, villain like and doesn't really care about Felicity, but you know. And the weird music thing, that's pretty much all that was wrong with the episode to me. I just don't, I guess we'll get more context as the season goes on, but I just thought it was kind of weird that, you know, you know, Dina is the voice of reason in this. So I just find it super interesting and everything. So overall, I thought it was a really good episode and we get to see Emiko's backstory and everything, so I really enjoyed that, and how she's very season one Oliver, like very season one Oliver. So it's kind of nice seeing that from that parallel of like, you know, how far Oliver's come in terms of everything that he's had to deal with. So anyway, really good episode. I really enjoyed it, and I'll see and that's going to do for this video. So if you like this video, please go to like, comment down below, tell me what you think of the episode. Do you agree, disagree? Just send me all thoughts down below. 
And I'm super interested to know what y'all think about um, Emiko and everything that's going on in the future scenes. I thought it was super interesting and I really enjoyed it. So anyway, subscribe and I'll see you on the next video. Bye everybody.